Hi, this is Ian Coleman from Signal Center and welcome uh, to this week's video analysis for the FX majors and the dollar index going into the week 8th of July uh, 2019. It is Sunday, we do a lot of our work on a Sunday uh, looking at chart formations, looking at our bespoke support and resistance levels and basically trying to decipher uh, what's going on in the FX majors and sometimes some of the crosses. So we're going to start off with the dollar index again we're going to break down some time frames I look at Ishimoku cloud I look at DMARC indicators I look at Marabuzo levels I look at chart formations I'm going to explain what all of these uh, different technical tools are uh, as we break down uh, through these different currency pairs so firstly I'm going to start off with the dollar index like I said I'm going to break down through the time frames and this is the monthly chart we've seen uh, a move to the low side uh, from levels close to uh, an Ishimoku cloud top that was located at 98.40 and we saw a high trade of 98.37 now we've been talking about this time frame and this chart formation for quite some time last week uh, we explained that it was quite important where we got uh, the weekly close so we had this uh, wedge formation breakout to the downside we had a doji style candle uh, which highlights indecision and then we push to the upside now we had a reverse trend line resistance so that's the level where we broke out of this wedge formation and we've retested at 9672 uh, a, a move above or a close above uh, 9672 basically negates uh, that wedge formation so it's now uh, regarded as a false breakout so we need to reanalyze uh, the dollar index this is the daily chart so although we're still bearish on the dollar index and if we just quickly move back to that weekly chart and I'll explain why we've got five waves to the downside and then what looks like a complex uh, correction as far as Elliott wave is concerned to the upside we've got a uh, 61.8% fib level at 97.86 and that's still held so a technical bias is still to the downside when we look to the daily chart here we posted uh, a double top formation that was confirmed uh, with a break of this low however this dip has been bought into quite aggressively now we could be forming a bearish head and shoulders here so this area uh, being the left shoulder the resistance level this being the head this potentially being the neckline and then moving up uh, to possibly form a right shoulder now if we go to a shorter time frame you've got to remember this is sort of in for intraday and um, sort of midweek analysis this last move up in the dollar can be counted in five waves so wave one wave two three and four and then up in five and we can see that we've stalled um, near this 261.8 percent extension level uh, quite late on Friday so at the moment we're not looking at um, selling into rallies in the dollar index we are looking at buying into dips probably uh, just for this formation to possibly complete so this being the first wave to the upside and then possibly a move lower and then a move up to get towards this resistance level so basically what we're saying is the intraday uh, bias on a lot of of the dollar based currency pairs I think it's going to be quite mixed quite volatile uh, this week uh, we're going to see dip buying rally selling uh, so we've really got to concentrate on our chart formations where our bespoke support and resistance levels are and I think to be honest it's a good opportunity uh, to look maybe outside the box a little bit look at the crosses euro sterlings offering quite a decent setup I believe um, euro yen not so good but then if we look at Aussie yen and I'm also going to look at another euro cross um, there's some quite decent opportunities moving away uh, from the dollar index this week so let's break down the time frames for uh, the other FX majors and this is obviously euro dollar so opposite of what we've seen in the dollar index we've got five waves Elliott waves to the upside then this complex uh, correction lower we've got a 61.8 percent fib at 111.80 we've seen some buying interest around there but if we actually look to this measuring tool here we can see uh, that we've had pretty mixed and volatile trading now for 33 uh, weeks in the major currency pair and that's seen a lot of chopping around in intraday price action now again 
just want to talk about the shorter time frame. So five waves to the downside. This is the four hour chart, so an intraday time frame. We've posted what's called a D Mark 13 count on that time frame. Now a D Mark 13 count often indicates the end of a trend or at least an upward bias. Now we've got a 261.8% fib here at 112.33. Uh, to the upside, uh, resistance uh, going into this week uh, is located at 112.70. So at the moment, we've got a trend of lower lows and lower highs. So really, we should still be looking at selling into rallies in Euro dollar, at least at the beginning uh, of next week. Going on to cable, let's break down a big picture analysis here. This still looks like a wedge formation. This is a monthly chart. We posted there a bullish outside candle going back into January of this year. That often indicates the end of a trend. However, we are getting pretty close towards the base of that candle, which would then negate that trigger. If we go to this time frame, I mean, this is a really important time frame for cable, and especially when we're thinking about the correlation between sterling and euro sterling. OK, so if we were expecting euro sterling to go to the downside, then we're expecting weaker euro and stronger sterling. So has you uh, has cable got towards that level? Well, let's have a look at this time frame. This is the daily time frame. There's a few factors here that would lead us to believe that we're possibly bottoming out uh, in cable. We've got some bullish divergence. So bullish divergence happens when the oscillator, and in this case, it's the relative strength index. When that makes higher highs and the chart makes lower lows, it shows uh, that the strength of these sell-offs are, are weakening and there's a possibility of a turnaround. So that's the first factor. The second factor is the DMARC 13 count, and that was posted this day, uh, 14th of June. Now, um, Peel recommends uh, a stop if you're trading DMARC 13 counts of basically the lowest candle in that 13 count projected from the low of that lowest candle. Sounds complicated, it's not really. Um, we'll probably do a video, educational video on how to calculate those at a, a later date. But I've calculated it and the DMARC stop for that 13 count is located at 124.80. Now, on Friday of this uh, of last week, sorry, we made a low of 124.81. So that stop, extremely close as it is, is still in place as far as this DMARC 13 count, bullish count, is concerned. Now, if I go to this time frame, and this is again the intraday time frame, it's lining up really well with Fib levels, wave one, wave two. Three and four, close to the 161.8%. And then down here, uh, we've got the 261.8% uh, FIB level. We've seen an inverted hammer on the intraday chart. That's often an indication that the sell-off is coming to an end and we're getting the start of a new upward bias. Again, we've got lower lows and lower highs. This is a really big level uh, for us at the beginning of next week, and that's 125.90. Perhaps see a rejection there, maybe a reverse head and shoulders forming. But at the moment, we've really got to see a break, a solid break of that level uh, to reverse the bias in cable. So the signals that we're coming towards the end of a trend, but lower lows, lower highs, that needs to be reversed. And we need to see higher highs and higher lows really for the medium term bias uh, to flip to the upside. Dollar Swiss, and this is really... Uh, quite an interesting uh, pair going into this week. And I've been looking at the crosses, Euro, Swiss and Sterling, Swiss, uh, to try and work out whether or not they're coming to a, the end of their sell-off. Now, Sterling, Swiss is quite an interesting um, currency pair. If we can analyse Euro, Sterling properly, then it's normally minus one correlated to Sterling, Swiss. So if we're looking at lower levels in Euro Sterling, then we should be looking at higher levels in Sterling Swiss, so possibly higher levels in, in Dollar Swiss. So moving away from that negative dollar bias, perhaps, for the Swiss franc. So let's have a look at a few time frames. This is the weekly time frame, broke this wedge formation to the downside. Important level, 99. It's going to be a little bit higher next week. Uh, around, around about the, the big figure, uh, which 
has attracted buying and selling. It's quite pivotal in dollar Swiss, one big figure, and it's an area that we should be aware of. So 1004 is the reverse trend line resistance of this wedge breakout. It's got a measure move down, target down here, but the intraday chart or the shorter time frames are sort of negating uh, this uh, wedge breakout. And um, let's just explain why. Okay, so this is the daily chart. This looks like an expanding wedge formation. Now, this in turn has a bias to break to the upside. So we've got that weekly wedge that says we should go lower and then we've got the daily wedge which says we should go higher now we've got a trend of lower uh, lower highs at 99.38 a break of their clear break of there and the measure move target is all the way back up here at 102.25 so mixed signals on those two time frames if we go to this time frame and again this looks really important as far as our analysis is concerned one, two, three, four. Are we completing a fifth wave? So going back to DMARC again, we've got a 12 count there. So the scope for buying still at the beginning of next week, because normally a 13 count uh, would highlight uh, a trend correction or reversal. Bespoke resistance is located here, 99.53. We've got trend, uh, sorry, intraday support located at 98.59. Now that's quite important when I'm talking about weekly and intraday. Basically, as far as our indicators are concerned, it could break this level, but as long as it closes below that level at the end of the week, then that signal is deemed to be correct or that resistance level is deemed to have hold. Um, if we look here, we've got a 261.8% uh, FIB level at 1.0009. Again, very close to that reverse trend line resistance, very close to that psychological one big figure. So there's quite a, a, a deep upside barrier in uh, dollar Swiss, but at the moment we'd still look to buy into dips. Uh, and like I'm saying, our bespoke support is located uh, down here. Dollar Yen, again, there's pretty mixed signals here. And that's what we're sort of talking about, sort of moving away from the dollar potentially for a while. Um, a, B, C, D formation target was completed, so we've got one, two, three, four, five waves to the upside, a corrective pattern lower. There wasn't really anything in the way of a, a, a reversal uh, candle at the base, but we have moved higher, uh, close to that 61.8% fib, uh, which is located at 107.60. If we go to this time frame, this is the monthly chart. Got a big triangle formation. We did break it to the downside. There's an important level. The reverse trend line resistance is located at 108.87. Got to take note of that. It could hold uh, going into uh, this week. But going on to this time frame, and this is the intraday time frame again, have we formed or broken out of a reverse head and shoulders pattern? So left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We've got some bespoke support located at 108.08 at the beginning of uh, next week. That's that reverse trend line resistance. Okay, so we're very close to it. So buying into uh, the market at these current levels is probably unwise. We've also got a DMARC 13 count. So that, again, uh, could highlight with, that we see at least a downside correction. If this formation uh, plays out, uh, then the measure move target is up here at 110.00. At 20 but again these signals are pretty mixed we've got D mark telling us to sell uh, we've got the head and shoulders telling us to buy so really uh, I think at the beginning of next week at least then dip buying uh, for us is probably the opportunity with the risk reward factor uh, being ample uh, for that measured move target of 110 uh, 20 dollar CAD two time frames going to look at here not the intraday chart this is the weekly chart, a very large expanding wedge formation. We posted a bearish outside candle here. Uh, that candle is often an indication that the upward trend is coming to an end. And we're going to see the start of a downward bias. Now we had a period of consolidation, correction, posted that DMARC 13 count again. We've seen an aggressive push uh, to the downside. Now the weekly chart did post a doji style candle. So that highlights indecision. However, there's nothing really in the way uh, of reversal uh, 
uh, formations uh, to, to suggest that the long-term bias is still not to the downside. And in fact, if we look at this formation, that looks like an expanding wedge formation again. So that's got a bias, long-term bias, to break to the downside. Shorter time frames. This is the one that I really like. This is the daily chart. This is a great level. So we've got impulsive move and this corrective move to the upside. We broke the wedge formation. We've hit the measured move target. Friday, we've seen what was support now becomes resistance. That's been retested close to this 161.8% Fib level. Now, the reason why I said I like this time frame is I've got this confluence area down here. So this is a 161.8% extension of this downward move. And this is a 261.8% extension of this downward move. So we've got a confluence area uh, to focus on for dollar CAD. Now, this move to the upside, although we have seen an immediate rejection, these corrective waves, if it is a fourth wave correction, is normally seen in a free wave pattern. So we've got resistance located at 131.55, and that's just above Friday's peak. Now, if we're going to move up to that level, it will also be wise to look at maybe four hour time frames, see if we're seeing some bearish divergence. So in other words, the chart is making that higher high, but the oscillator is making that lower high. And that might mean that that move to the top uh, to the upside again is just merely corrective. Uh, Aussie dollar. Let's look at a few time frames here. Weekly chart. We've got bearish Elliott wave count to the downside. Pretty mixed uh, and volatile trading uh, here. Looks to be forming an ending, uh, or sorry, an expanding wedge formation. Quite interesting here in the fact that the trend uh, of lower highs is very close to this very deep um, Ishimoku cloud. So this upside barrier is probably going to hold at least for the time being, and that's located at 70.87. If we go to this time frame, and again, the Ishimoku cloud on Thursday, levels outside of that cloud formation, uh, found some selling interest. The, the strong selling pressure on Friday has left the Marabuzo level at 69.99. Now, a Marabuzo level is the open and the close, or the midpoint of the open and the close of a strongly bearish or strongly bear, uh, bullish candle. So that's quite an important level when we look at the intraday chart. Are we forming a reverse head and shoulders pattern? So this is the impulse move to the upside, possibly a fifth wave extension. Not sure about that. We did post a DMARC 13 count on an intraday chart. We've moved to the downside. Now, the reason why I said that Marabuzo level was quite important is because we've got some beast boat resistance located at 70, the figure uh, going in uh, to Monday. So Marabuzo level at 69.99 got a uh, beast boat resistance level located at uh, 70 the figure so we like to spot these confluence areas the more indicators or trend line resistance etc that we see at an area or at a specific price obviously strengthens uh, that zone but to the downside we've got bespoke support here at 69.35 so we're, we're basically trading in the middle so again talking about the dollar this week uh, for dollar-based uh, currency pairs, we're probably going to be looking at selling rallies, buying dips, etc. Et and here, we could we could be doing either. Um, Euro sterling, like I said, this is looking quite interesting as a cross currency. Uh, five waves to the upside. Is this an ABC uh, free wave correction completed? Bullish outside candle posted in May often indicates the end of a trend and the start of a new upward bias but we've got trend line resistance located at 90.22 of this triangle formation if we go to this time frame and this is the daily chart bullish count to the upside strong impulsive move will normally mean uh, that the next move is corrective We've got a 261.8% extension level located up here at 91.28. But the more important factor, I think, is what's happening here. We've got some bearish divergence. So again, the chart makes higher highs. The oscillator, in this case, is the RSI, Relative Strength Index, has made lower highs. That's often an indication that the trend is coming to an end. We've got a DMARC 13 count here again. That's got a projected stop loss 
90 10 uh, if we go to this time frame and this is the intraday time frame looks to be forming an expanding wedge pattern a break of 89 uh, 26 it's going to be slightly higher obviously going into this week uh, 89.28 and the measure move target is down here at 88.26 so sort of swaying towards uh, a negative or bearish bias now as opposed to that quite long-term bullish bias that we saw at least for the short term euro sterling there's not really much to say uh, in this currency pair at the moment finding it quite hard to analyze to be perfectly honest um, We've seen quite an aggressive move to the upside uh, last two week, two days of last week. A little net movement, really. Uh, the Marabuzo level uh, from uh, this candle got close, uh, and we have seen a rejection of intraday rallies. Now, we've got a DMARC 12 count, so we haven't seen a 13 count yet. Is this, uh, I'm just wondering whether or not this 78.6% uh, uh, fib level located at 120.68 is going to find some buying interest but really at the moment we're in no man's land uh, as far as euro yen is concerned and I think intraday just because we've had that strong impulsive move to the downside we should be looking uh, at selling it into rallies now I did say at the start I'd like to look at two cross currencies I'm only going to sort of briefly highlight what I'm seeing here uh, Aussie yen this is the eight hour chart. We've seen quite a bullish count to the upside or a, a bullish move to the upside. Is this five waves completed already? So one, two, three, four, five, or is this one, two, and we're in three, four, and then going up in the fifth wave. The reason I quite like uh, this uh, analy analytical outlook for next week is that I've got some bespoke uh, resistance located here at 76.48. I'm close to a DMARC 13 count. I think if we move up to that level, we're likely uh, to see some bearish divergence in shorter time frames, eight hour, four hour charts. If that is the case, we complete this 13 count, then I think we'll get a correction to the downside. Not a long term correction. I think we'll probably form a head and shoulders pattern. So this would then be the left shoulder, head, the move up, completing the neckline, and then move down. Uh, to uh, form a right shoulder but for me I'm personally looking at that level 76.47 is the exact level um, possibly selling into rallies uh, next week and the next one I want to look at this is euro uh, New Zealand dollar so euro against the New Zealand dollar five wave count to the downside bit disjointed one two three four going down in five are we now completing an A, B, C, D uh, correction to the upside? So uh, we've got a 38.2% FIB level located at 69.91. Now I've got some beats boat resistance located at 169.93. Although we have seen a move lower uh, off uh, the high trade from Friday, uh, I haven't got an exhaustion count. We've got a 12 count on the intraday chart. So I believe there's still scope uh, for a potential push higher before uh, we see a move again to the downside. Now, this again could potentially just be a short term signal. And we could, if we broke down another time frame, let's just move it down to a three hour chart so we see sort of the intraday outlook a bit better. This could then form a uh, bearish, or sorry, bullish reverse head and shoulders pattern so it would come down left shoulder head right shoulder so again even though uh, the bias is to sell into intraday rallies that downside move uh, potentially if we get it uh, is uh, is likely I think to be limited uh, at uh, next week okay I hope you've uh, found that uh, analysis interesting educational um, we'll be back again with some more uh, we hope you have a, a good trading week and we'll speak to you again soon many thanks